G'day folks, welcome to another episode of Learn to Paint TV. Rod Moore here with you again from the Learn to Paint Academy. Now today we're going to do a, another painting that's a little bit different from what we've been doing in the previous episodes. We're going to do a, a nice little floral painting. Now my mother sent me a photo and asked me if I could paint it. And so this is the painting that I did for her, which I'm about to send to her. Um, and it's quite a nice little painting. It's got this sort of china... Um, Blue China vase here, parts in shadow. It's got a little bit of calligraphy on there, which we'll, um, I'll show you how I've done that. Then it's got these lovely blue flowers, some of them in shadow, some of them catching the light over here, sitting on some sort of tabletop with a nice shadowy background there. So of course our first step with the more method of painting is step one is our drawing. We're gonna take a little flat brush here, little hog hair bristle brush. We've got a 16 by 20 inch canvas. So I'm going for a slightly larger version than what I did uh, previously in oils. We're going to do, use the acrylics today, um, the Artillery Interactive. And as always, I've got my ultramarine blue and my permanent crimson or alizarin crimson or a magenta. Um, basically what you want is a transparent warm red. So we take a bit of water, we get some paint happening and as we always do with the more method of painting, we want to find those big shapes and our main directional lines and so on. So the main shape here is going to be that vase and it's not sitting, it's sort of, it originated around about the one third mark. So it's sitting up a little bit high, um, but there's a base of it that runs sort of there. It's going to be slightly off center. So maybe it needs to run there and then it runs back that way. Maybe not that sharply the front of it there, and then it runs back that way, a little bit sharper on that side, right? And then we've got these, we've got the front face of it there, we've got the side over there, and we've got the side there. Now, how high up do we take that? Um, we probably need to come up to just over the halfway mark, halfway being, you know, somewhere there. So it's something like that. Now that may be just a touch too big, and it may be just a touch too far on the left hand side. But hey, let's, let's run with that. We're gonna do a different version. It's not gonna be exactly the same. We'll run that shadow out the back there, and then we will run the table top through there, which means that shadow's going to run to there. Okay, so that helps us find the starting point of where we need to be. And um, from there, it's a pretty simple sort of process from there. Because what I'm, I'm going to keep this drawing really simple. Um, run that into the front there. And that's going to run slightly that way. We won't see a lot of those lines. And how do we draw these blue flowers? Well, we're not going to draw them all in. What we're going to do is we're going to place a few uh, bigger ones here. So I'm just going to do these as just marks like that. Some of them facing to us, so we've seen the full face of the flower, but some of them we're gonna see on the side. So the ones we see on the side are gonna be more, just sort of angled like that, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to place some of these around. Maybe not all the ones that we'll end up using or needing um, for now, but we just get a bit of a feel for how this is going to unfold. I think we're gonna have a darker one up in that shadow area up there. So that shadow is going to sort of run through there. So we need to overlap that shadow with some. Okay, and we'll have one there, we'll have one sitting there in the shadow. Maybe. Okay, let's do step two now, the more method. I've switched to a big brush, big hog hair bristle brush, and I've got my ultramarine blue permanent crimson, yellow ochre, a little bit of cad yellow, and some titanium white. Now this is wanting to go for a walk. So we'll start off with this blue and some red. Okay, and we'll get a nice dark happening. A little bit more red in there to go a bit on the blue side. Get a nice dark happening, and we will just start to establish our darks um, in along the back here. So you're going to need a fair bit of uh, paint just to block this in if you're using this size canvas. So don't be stingy on the paint because it'll take forever to block this part in. Okay, so you want a big brush, you want plenty of paint, 
and just bury that up a little. And what we'll do as we start to put in this background is we'll start to cut out the, the shape of the vase and the flowers and so on. It'll all start to come to life. Okay. I'm just going to use a little bit more water than what I sort of typically would, just so we get it to flow. I'm not concerned about the paint being a bit thin in the background at this stage. Because my, my main goal here is just to start to eliminate the white and start to establish a little bit of a, a value structure in this painting. Okay, and I'll use that for my light tones. My light tones are going to be in here and on the tabletop. It's going to be slightly darker on the wall, slightly lighter on the tabletop, but pretty much the same colour. So I'll take a big swipe of the white, okay, and we'll put in a little bit of the blue, and we'll put in a little bit of the cad yellow, and a little bit of the alizarin crimson. And what we're looking for is a bluey green tone. So you can see that it's a little too green, a little bit too yellow. So I'll put in a touch more blue, okay, and that's it there. Now I'm not going to over mix it because I want to have a little bit of variety in that background colour um, so that it, you know we have some interest there. It's still a touch too bright uh, because that's, I really want to have the tabletop down here a little bit lighter. So I'll take a bit more blue and uh, this time I'll just pull through some of that dirty red there, okay, and then we'll mix that. Let's get a little touch of water on that, okay. Again, don't over mix it. Okay, but that's better. So I've got a lot to paint. I haven't overmixed it so we get variety in this background. Okay, we just blur those edges together there. Got a little bit of pigment coming out a bit strong there, so I'll just scrub that in. Now this is just the first pass, so if there's hard edges or bits that you don't like, don't worry about that. We can just cover that up um, when we start applying the foliage and so on. We'll cover up anything that's not really working for us. Okay. Notice how I'm holding the brush as well, holding it down the end there. Because I don't want to be uptight with this and um, really strangle the brush. Um, I want to be loose and feel a bit free with it. I know that's not always easy for people when they're learning to paint to have that feeling of just doing nice big loose brush strokes. However, the more you practice that, the easier that gets, right? <laughs> so now this tabletop down here, we'll take the rest of that white take a little bit more of that yellow. I will push this to a slightly warmer tone. It's going to probably end up a little bit more yellowy green, but I'll be okay with that. Okay, so you can see that there, it's a little bit yellow green. It can be a bit more saturated, so I don't need to necessarily grey it, but I'll take a little touch of the yellow ochre just to give it a little bit more neutral green. And you can see that there, that's lighter. In my original, everything was a bit bluer, so I'll just Add a little bit more blue into that. Um, and, but what, it definitely has to be a little bit lighter, a little bit more punchier in tone than uh, what we've got on the wall. Okay, and then where we've got this shadow, we'll just cut back around that. Okay. Because that shadow is still a little bit wet, it's going to blur a little, but that's okay. We'll pull that colour down into the uh, tabletop there. Okay, and then along that line there. Okay, so it probably wants to come in a bit there. There we go. So over here, with this edge here, where we shift from the tabletop into the the wall, it's a little bit of a lost edge, you know, because the bow is very similar. But when we get over into this 
darker side, the tinged shadow, um, it's a very obvious shift, isn't it? Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'll just scoop up some water there and I'll just scrub the rest of this in. I'm not going to bother covering that to the end at this stage. Good. Now I've got nice texture in there as well because I'm using fairly thick paint. So now what I'll do is I'll just take a little bit more blue and red into that mix there and I'll take a swipe of white into all of that. Okay. So it's a little bit red, so I'll get some more blue in there. More blue. Okay. Probably a little bit more blue. There we go, that's more like what I was after. And um, we'll run that. Now this needs to be lighter than that shadow that's on the desktop there, tabletop. So this is where the uh, side of the vase now is turning away from the light. towards the shadow side. So the light's coming in from over here, okay? And it's pushing shadow out that way. I just need a slightly smaller brush, okay? You see the difference between these two? Just getting that edge, just need this one here. So I'll take a swipe of paint there. Now, you don't want a perfect edge here, we want to try and just blur that a little bit. Okay, because we don't want hard edges where we don't want the eye to go. So where something's in shadow like that, we don't necessarily want the eye wandering around there and, and lingering there. Now what I'll do is I'll lighten up that shadow. We need a lighter version of the shadow, but not that white for this face here. Because this is getting more light, but it's still turned away from the light. The light's coming directly in here. I think we'll leave that there uh, for our blocking. You know, I'm not going to block in the flowers and the vegetation. Um, we're going to do all of that in step three. And what I want to do is I'll use a palette knife and I'll show you getting the different darker version and the lighter version of the flowers. And I want to do it wet into wet. So uh, we'll work fast through that process so we can blur the different edges of the darks and the lights and together and create a really nice effect. But now overall, we're on track. Here's the original, right? Um, side by side there, we're, we're creating a version of it, not exactly creating the exact same painting, but definitely our own version of it. And you're seeing the working process so that you'll be able to then, um, you know, set up any vase of flowers and, and be able to then recreate that in a, you know, impressionistic, semi-abstract style. We're not trying to paint it exactly as it is. So let's have a break. We'll let this dry off. I'll see you after the break for step three. All right, welcome back folks. We're now gonna do step three of the more method of painting. This is uh, dried down quite nicely and I think we're ready now to tackle our flowers and our foliage and everything to start to bring this to life. So what I've got up here, I've got my normal ultramarine blue and permanent crimson. I've added a little touch of cerulean blue just to get some of those brighter blues. However, you, you don't need the cerulean blue if you don't have it. You can always just lighten off our ultramarine blue. But I thought for a bit of variety, I'll just play around with the cerulean. I've got a little flat uh, palette knife here. Um, equally, you could use one like this, just a, a medium sort of to small size one. Don't get a really small one because then you'll fiddle around too much, but just a medium size one. Ultramarine blue, little pinhead of the permanent crimson or alizarin crimson. Okay. And then this is our shadow version of the, of the flower tone, right? So we'll just cut through and get a nice We've got a fair bit of paint on there. Um, and this wants to be a little bit bluer, but not maybe just a pinhead of the white. It doesn't, it wants to be visible against this backdrop. Okay, and remember before we added a little bit of water to the backdrop just to thin it out a little bit. So that is 
viewable to me. It might not be with the lights um, here, but we'll see. And then we'll add some flowers in here. And I'll break up the edges a little bit. You know, I can push the edges around. There's one there. Maybe we need another one there. See, there's a little bit of brighter blue coming through there, which is good. Okay. And look, as I've said a number of times on this show, you know, I don't try and paint trees. I just try and get some nice shapes. I'm not trying to paint flowers here. I'm just trying to get some interesting flower-like shapes, right? And if you think of it that way, it'll save you so much frustration. Okay, now as we come around into the light here, um, I'm going to take that and I'm going to put a little touch of white, but no red into it. See how that's so much brighter? That ultramarine blue, just a little touch of the white there. See that? And that's going to give us the effect that this is more in the light than uh, these ones over here. Okay. Which is what we want. Okay. That one's overlapping into the uh, into the shadows there. <clears throat> so this is effectively, we're just blocking in um, these shapes. Okay. I don't mind if the edges get a little rough like that. Okay, so I've just added up our cadmium yellow and our um, yellow ochre and a little bit more blue. And I've got a real scruffy end brush, you know, one of those ones that are sort of, um, you normally think is on its last legs. They're good for what I'm about to do, right? So I'm gonna take a scoop of the blue, scoop of the yellow ochre, We'll get a nice muted green there and we'll add a little touch of the cad yellow into it. Okay, so we get a bit of a green happening there. And then in between now, these flowers, I'm gonna put some foliage-like action in there. Okay, so we're just uh, blurring it into the blue a little bit there as well, which is okay. A little bit hanging down there, maybe a touch there. Okay. A little bit up in here. So just some foliage that maybe the florist um, included in the in the um, wrapping of the, the flowers there. Okay. So just a little bit like so. And then we'll take a bit more of the cadmium yellow, mix it on the side. So we've got a brighter yellowy green there now. And let's just highlight in some of that foliage just for a bit of variety. Keep it dark over that side, so I'm putting it, I'm highlighting it where the, um, where the light's hitting there, okay? So that looks good. We've got a little bit of foliage happening in there now. What I'll do is I'll just create a, a lighter version again of our blue using our cerulean, okay? So this is our cerulean. We'll take a chunk of white, mix that on the edge. So, and we'll just scrape some of that off there, okay? And then I'm just going to, just careful how you apply this because we don't want to overdo it. We don't want to wipe out what we've already done on the flowers that we have already uh, got some things happening on. And of course, we don't want that to end up over in the dark side either. And I'll get my little rigger brush. Now this one's a little bit dried, hard and crusty, which is fine. Um, because what I'm gonna do is just take some of that paint there. Now, here's a little trick. If I start putting some calligraphy sort of writing on there, it's going to be a bit pasted on. So if I just wet the surface of the bars there, and then take a little bit of paint. Uh, then I can just work it, and it'll it'll hopefully um, move for a couple of crossbars. Hopefully, it'll it'll just blend in a little bit with the um, with the paint being a little bit wetter. Okay, a little bit smudged down the bottom there, but that's okay. 
All right, now in this side here, we just need it to be slightly darker. So I'll get the ultramarine blue and the alizarin crimson. Too much alizarin crimson, so I'll get some more ultramarine blue. Okay, because it's sized over in shadow. Okay, and I'm not actually writing anything. I'm just making a few little marks. Okay, what I will do is just get a little bit more cadmium yellow, mix that into the green there, get a touch of water. Okay, and just run don't get it too bright over on that side obviously. We just connect these flowers into the bars, like so. Just a couple of little marks is all it needs. I'm pretty happy with that one. Um, one thing we don't do often enough in this show is to sign our paintings. So I thought, because we've got a lot of foreground still there. Oh, and one thing I did in the other painting is I Getting a bit of the blue there. I um, might pop it there. I put the a mark of of a uh, flower petal just sitting there. With a little bit of foliage, sort of uh, give the impression it's just laying there. Well, there you go, folks. Flowers for Mum. I'll grab the original and show you. That's the original one that I've been working off. I did in oils, and uh, I'll put them side by side. You know, they're similar. They're not not an exact copy, um, but. You know, very similar, and uh, I like this one. I've got more focus of the light hitting in here. Um, this one's a little bit more subdued, and uh, of course, they're all going to turn out slightly different. Here's another one that I did, um, which you probably get up on eBay. And again, you can see that they're similar, but each of them has their own personality. So it's not about doing a direct copy, it's about creating an interpretation. Getting the basic skills down, as you've seen, so that you can then set up any you know, arrangement of flowers and you've got a basic working approach now on how to paint those. And we'll do some more episodes of uh, floral painting coming up in the future as well, just to keep the variety and interest there for you. So anyway, hope you've enjoyed this episode of uh, Learn to Paint TV. I've certainly enjoyed it and I think it's come up pretty well. And uh, Great little painting to start to learn how to paint florals. Have a go at this one. Let me know how you go. And uh, make sure you check out every episode of Learn to Paint TV. I'll put the web address underneath me there, which is www.learntopaint.tv. And of course, if you go to our Learn to Paint Academy, www.learntopaint.academy, and request the free course, I go into a lot more detail, a more method of painting, um, the paints, the brushes, the steps, and we break it down for you in a lot more detail. So um, check it out and hopefully we'll see you again next week on Learn to Paint TV. Cheers for now.